Hello and welcome back to another Before You Buy and today I want to talk about using a NAS for surveillance before any of you go out of your way to spend a decent amount of change on a network attached storage device for surveillance or as an MBR or as some kind of CCTV camera recording system please watch this video as I'm going to go through all of the main things that you need to consider with regards to your budget, with regards to the resource consumption and ultimately what will help you choose the perfect surveillance NAS early doors just in this video alone. So for 10, 20 minutes of your time, I hope this video can help you. So straight off the bat, these are all things that a lot of you when you buy a NAS for surveillance suddenly go, oh man alive I should have thought of that or you use it and you go no one told me that and one of the earliest things that no one really tells anyone about using a NAS for surveillance is to do with the storage media the NAS drives that are put inside these devices generally there's lots of mounts if you use a Synology I know a lot of the recommendations at the moment are either to use Synology's own hard drives in a lot of their enterprise level rigs or you can use ones like NAS based drives like Seagate Ironwolf and WD Red as much as useful as all these are, they're actually not perfect for surveillance. And if you're gonna use a NAS specifically for surveillance, and again, by surveillance, I mean utilizing multiple IP cameras in your home or business environment, with all of them recording regularly or with tailored alerts to the NAS system in order for you to retrieve them from time to time or look at it you know, for checking if something went wrong or if someone broke into an area or business, those drives I've just shown you aren't actually that suitable for that. Now, NAS hard drives, like any other tool, are geared towards a certain utility. Now, a number of you will watch this and go, sure, sure, there is no difference between NAS hard drives and normal hard drives and enterprise hard drives. It's all a big old con. And I get why people might feel that. But hard drive technology has moved on so so much over the years and in the same way you wouldn't use a bread knife to spread butter although you can it's hardly designed for it and you wouldn't use a teaspoon to ladle soup the idea is that hard drives have been geared and designed for different means and the same thing goes for hard drives now when it comes to an as for surveillance if you use nas hard drives these are drives that are designed for a far faster uptake upon the reading of the drive. They're also designed to be on 24 seven, but they are ideally designed for a much more balanced read write environment. Now, surveillance is very different to that because although you might have five, 10, 20, 50 cameras dotted around your home or business environment, then um, those cameras are gonna be recording, but you're not gonna sit there and watch 10 different camera recordings of the same 24 hours the read action of those drives is going to be tiny, but the write action is going to be amorphous. You're gonna have all of these cameras all sending data to the NAS all at the same time, which is gonna cause heavy write action. So NAS hard drives in a NAS that's only gonna be used for surveillance aren't actually that suitable. And that's why you need to buy surveillance hard drives again. WD Purple or Seagate Skyhawk. These are drives that are geared more towards heavy write action and less read. Because if you are using a surveillance NAS, 90, 95% of the time, footage is just gonna be writing to those disks. And it's only when you get a triggered alert on your mobile or someone says, can you do me a favor, can you check the recordings on bill in accounts from Thursday? That's the only time you're gonna access it and read in that small period. Now. The reason I say all this is a number of you will be keen to ask the question, what if I'm buying a NAS and I'm using it for surveillance and other things, Plex, VMs, generalized backups? In that scenario, I would strongly recommend buying normal NAS hard drives because although it may seem contrary to what I just said, in that scenario, the read-write is going to be more sporadic. The read-write is going to be less, you know, 90-10 than it is in just surveillance. But it's, if you are going to buy a NAS for just surveillance, get surveillance drives alone because that heavy right action when you can have all of those cameras the last thing you want is stress on the system when you've got multiple drives banging all that data towards the disks and inconsistencies you know um, errors in the recording occur due to the drives not standing up to that heavy level of right action now the next thing when it comes to buying a nas for surveillance and this is one that i talked about before and this is another area that massively splits opinion and that is camera licenses lots of people buy a nas 
and aren't they are either not aware of the concept of camera licenses or or, um, or are so ill-informed about it that when they do have to go down this route they suddenly go hang on what you're taking the uh, camera license is when you get a NAS, they arrive with a few camera licenses. These are the ability to add cameras to the system. The software that you get, the surveillance software from Synology and QNAP, or Surveillance Station uh, version 8, or QVR Pro, these softwares are great. I would say all of them, uh, particularly these two, but you know, the majority of NAS-based surveillance softwares are pretty business level with those two standing out more than anyone else. Now, the development for that software with regards to firmware updates with innovation, changes in the service, upgrades, stuff like AI stuff that we'll talk about later on. All these things happen all the time to make the system as, you know, as ideal as possible to the end user. So whether you're a home user that's just chucking a camera at the front of the house, camera at the back of the house, maybe one upstairs, that's your lot. You aren't going to have the same level of reliance and the same level of dependence on this same NAS system that might be used by a business that has 10 or 20 cameras dotted around. So in order to make sure the software can be as usable for everyone as possible while still remaining stable and financially sound, most NAS brands have gone into the idea that when a NAS is purchased, it arrives with some free camera licenses. So in the case of this Synology, it got two camera licenses. Most QNAPs arrive with either four or eight camera licenses, depending on which surveillance software you use. And then you can attach that many cameras completely for free. But the minute you start exceeding that number, they expect you to buy additional licenses. And it's their way of kind of sorting out which users are using it for home and which are using it for business and therefore these are the ones that are going to be the most dependent on it and ultimately the ones that are going to complain the most if the system isn't tip top now whether i agree with that or disagree with that maybe we'll save that for another video but this is their justification for camera licenses and a number of you when you buy a NAS you go oh we can use it for plex media server and do you know what we'll stick some cameras around the house that will justify the price understand that you should check how many camera licenses the NAS arrives with because they're not cheap. Generally, a camera license retails per camera at an additional 30 to 50 pounds per camera just for the license. You can buy batches of, you know, um, one camera license, two camera license, four, eight and more. And these batches are better value, but they're still going to cost between 30 to 50 nicker per camera, not including the cost of the camera. So make sure when you buy an ads for camera, um, uh, uh, for surveillance, that you double check that the number of licenses it's got and you weigh out the pros and cons on your budget. And another thing I've not mentioned in any other video I should add, because this is a relatively new occurrence, where hearing and seeing some brands change the way they handle licensing. So you'll get free camera licenses, but we're starting to see either talked on forums or slowly appearing on the channel, this idea of some camera licenses being based on a time period. So they're cheaper, but the camera license lasts for one year, two year, etc., etc. Now that I'm less certain can be justified. The idea you buy a surveillance system and the camera license you get isn't lifetime. The idea that it's cheaper, say it's 20 quid or something, but that 20 quid only lasts a year or so, that's going to add up over time. So that's another subject you really should look into before going ahead with one of these purchases because surveillance camera licenses are always one of the things that people don't factor into their budget. And when they go, do you know what? We'll spend a grand on that system and the cameras. And then suddenly they're like, oh, we can't use it unless we spend another 500 pounds. Awful. Next standalone surveillance now standalone surveillance in the context of nas is a system that not only can be accessed via the local area network the lan and the network generally or it can be accessed via the internet but a standalone surveillance solution is one that has the nas and an hdmi out for a monitor and support of kvm overall keyboard video mouse the ability to have a terminal that they can work at click click have the feed focus on certain cameras, all that kind of stuff. And KVM and a standalone surveillance solution 
is not as common as you think. QNAP pretty much ruled a roost on that with both Surveillance Station and to a much higher standard QVR Pro. But Synology, even though I would argue their surveillance software is the best overall for lots of reasons that I've talked about in other videos, only two to three units in their entire catalog of devices support KVM. The majority of them require you to have a separate standalone PC terminal access via the network or the internet to access the camera feed, which is great, and the desktop client apps. But if you are looking at a KVM cell where you want a dedicated computer connected to access the content of the NAS as a KVM, QNAP's pretty much the only one. Acer Store do it with their um, um, security center um, surveillance application, but I would argue it's nowhere near the same standard as Synology Surveillance Station or QNAP's QVR Pro. So although they do it, they don't do it to the same extent as QNAP. And arguably the fact that the modern generation of Synology's uh, DVA system, that's their deep video analytics, something we'll talk about in a moment, that system has a graphics card inside with an HDMI port on the inside, but they've cornered it off. They've blocked it on the back of the unit. So even though Synology have got um, a surveillance unit with a GPU card with an HDMI out, that is not one of the units from theirs that supports uh, KVM and a standalone surveillance solution. So do bear that in mind when buying a solution, when you hear how good Synology surveillance um, software is and you see pictures of a Synology NAS, a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse, do bear in mind that it's very specific. The MVR1219, the uh, VH series, uh, and that's really it. Those two families are the only ones that are HDMI equipped. So I've already sort of talked about it there, AI. Um, modern NAS solutions now in the last year or so, in the latest improvements and um, developments in the world of Surveillance Station and um, QBR Pro, these have started to incorporate AI-assisted surveillance. This is more commonly known by Synology as deep video analysis, not just by them, that is a term that a lot of AI-powered surveillance use. And in the case of QNAT, they refer to it as a lot of their QVR, QVR door, QVR face, all these different QVR services. And what it amounts to is AI-assisted surveillance. So you've got all your cameras, they're all dotted around, and they're seeing the same things they always have done. They've just gone there, they're watching the people go by, they're watching the cars go by, etc., etc. But every frame of that recording is being analysed by the NAS system. It is watching with preset parameters. So, for example, if you want to know if in this shot a certain person appears, DVA can help because it can keep a record of all the faces, it can then keep a record of all the people in its database, and if a person comes into the database who's not on there, that person then flags an alert. It doesn't just look for people, it looks for faces. Something QVR face um, from QNAP and QVR Pro does very, very well. At the same time as that, people and faces aren't enough. Everything from people counting, so people going in and out of a certain doorway, it can be counted, or you have an area um, um, on the field of view within the camera, uh, like camera's viewpoint, and you go, right, I don't mind people walking through here, but if a car comes through here, or a bike comes through here, I want to be alerted. You need a software system on the NAS that can identify the difference between a person, a camera, a car, a dog, a handbag. So that is very much where DVA from Synology and the QVI, uh, QVR AI stuff from QNAP live. It is the idea that every single frame is being analyzed by the NAS in real time. That takes a tremendous amount of horsepower inside. Definitely, uh, um, generally a very um, highly graphically assisted CPU. So a decent embedded graphics processor there, at least an i3 and above, or a dedicated graphics card inside. This is being helped to a degree with support of the uh, Coral M2, that Google TPU from QNAP. I think we've already talked about it on the channel already. We've got another video coming up soon on that. But um, both brands make a big song and dance of talking about AI-assisted surveillance on multiple platforms and then slightly forget to mention that AI-assisted surveillance is by no means supported on the majority of their systems. I would say from Synology, it is supported on exactly two NASes, the DVA3219 and the DVA3221. So if you hear about these great things um, from AI-assisted surveillance on Synology software, 
Remember, it's only available on those two systems. And with QNAP, it's technically available on all of their systems. But if you don't have the hardware and the horsepower, and we are talking at least 8 to 16 gig of memory, we are talking at least an i3 and above processor, if we're not talking at least support of a graphics card inside there, on one of the few supported graphics cards from QNAP, either you're not going to be able to run it at all, or you're going to be running such a poor performance that you put the integrity of your surveillance setup at risk. So if you are interested in AI, triple, triple check that right now the system you're looking at actually has it, because you may be not lied to, but you may be being missold something via a mission. The final thing to talk about, and something again, sorry to rag on all the NAS brands, and I'm talking about all of the NAS brands here, this idea of surveillance on affordable NAS systems. If you look at the spec sheets from any of these NAS brands, you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you scroll, you scroll, you scroll, and right there at the bottom, there'll be a tab about surveillance. It'll go, well, oh, this NAS, it supports 12 cameras. This NAS supports 20. This one, 40. This one, 80. And you're like, oh, great, fantastic. I can chuck all those cameras on. Hold your high horses. The problem is, one, a lot of the time, those are idealistic numbers. And they are based on maximum memory on the device, and they are based at certain uh, recording quality levels, maybe 15 frames per second at a lower resolution. They do make it, they, over the last year or two, they have gone to the trouble of breaking it down into recording resolution quality, which is better, but still nonetheless, they are very idealistic numbers there. Secondly, you may notice that a lot of the time, the brackets for those numbers jump kind of, one to five cameras, five to 12 cameras, 12 to 20 cameras, or 16 cameras, 16, da, 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 da. The reason for that is mostly because of the CPU. Now the CPU inside a lot of these NAS is pretty much the main deciding point for the number of cameras you can use. We can talk about faster media, chucking in a load of memory in there, stick a graphics card, you can say what you want, but ultimately that CPU is one of the biggest potential bottlenecks of any surveillance setup. So in an ARM-based CPU, which are far more efficient, and they use compressed lines of code through the processor to get jobs done with less power being consumed, generating less heat, um, these CPUs will generally support, at most comfortably, around eight to 10 cameras. They may say they'll support 12 or 16 cameras, but those are idealistic scenarios. I would not use an ARM 32-bit processor for more than about 8 to 10 cameras, and even then the NAS shouldn't be doing anything else. If it's an ARM 64-bit processor, these are far more uh, modern generation from the likes of Realtek and the RTD 1296, those 15 to maybe 20 cameras at the very lower qualities. Those are the ones where if you're going to run that many cameras, again, you're going to spend a fortune on licenses. I've got to say that ARM 64-bit ones, even though a lot of them seem to say 20 to 25 cameras, nice, it's really not the case, okay? 15, 20 max. Everything after that, again, we are talking about your Intels and AMD 64-bit um, x86 processors, 25, 30 cameras, they say 40, don't buy that. If you you can try and go for 40 cameras if you like and max the system out, maybe use some SSDs as well, but bear in mind that is an idealistic and not ideal picture quality there when you could have to lower things around and you've got to think of the bandwidth you're channeling through on those cameras as well it's only when you look at xeons or you look at intel core processors or you look at graphically assisted xeons that you can start talking about 40 50 60 70 cameras and even then once again we are talking a tremendous amount of bandwidth of footage being sent down the ethernet cables on these cameras all dotted around your home or business environment and that's when you go look at 10g so that's another bottleneck for another day but this has been using a nas for surveillance before you buy i hope you found it helpful and if you have chuck me a like if you want to learn more about this or see more before you buys go to the description and bang the subscribe button and go through some of the old vids and if you are looking for a right nas for surveillance you're looking to spend your money on a new solution and you're slightly trepidatious maybe it's an upgrade maybe it's your first steps into this and you want a recommendation for the nas or the cameras use the free advice section at nas compares not the comments the free advice section there over on the blog it's manned by myself and eddie no one else it's not automated it's not done for profit we don't sell these things we just give the free advice 
It may take us an extra day or two to answer your query because it is only the two of us, but we will answer every email. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.